Hey guys, hope everyone is uh, going well. Haven't been on the live streams for a few days. Ended up uh, after I was getting sick, a little bit sick last week. Uh, lost my, <coughs> there we go again, lost my voice. Um, so I had to push all my all my appointments and, and obviously live streams uh, forward to this week. So here we are on a Monday today, a public holiday over here in Perth, but I thought I'd get cracking for you guys um, and start to get some, some content up again to, to, to start changing the way you train. Um, and one of the, the main things that I wanted to talk about today is alcohol consumption, okay? Um, with your racing, okay, and how that affects your performance. Now, this is something that I've noticed a lot lately. I don't know if it's been that I've been looking for it more um, because I saw a couple of people doing it or something that's just more prevalent in, in motorsport than any other sport. But there seems to be a, a worrying trend of increased uh, or alcohol intake after race day, okay, there's pictures of, of high level races at a motorsport, uh, at a motorsport level that are on the podium, that have a drink with them, that have a beer, okay, that are getting off their bike and having a drink. They're on the podium, they're having a drink. Um, they're going out afterwards, going out and, and partying, okay, um, and and uh, being involved in this type of behaviour. Now, I'm not saying that uh, drinking is bad. You should never drink, okay. Yes, if you're, you're at the end of the season, maybe it's your, your last race of the season, okay, and you're done for a few months, then yes, go out and, and have a great time. That's awesome, okay? But if you're um, if you're racing all day, okay, you're putting your body through high levels of stress, even if you've done all the right stuff leading up to them, you've done all the right training, you've eaten all the right stuff, as soon as you go to, to alcohol after race day, you've affected your recovery. Now, alcohol is, a, is pretty much empty calories, okay? Obviously, it's high in sugar. Um, so number one, we don't want to be, we don't want that in our, in, or that's not something we want to be consuming uh, straight after race day. But more importantly, um, it also dehydrates you. Okay, so alcohol will cause you to dehydrate. Now, our body is made up of 60 to 65 percent of water. Okay, um, and there's studies that have shown that as little as a two percent or a two percent decrease in the total level of body weight before intense exercise uh, can actually reduce your performance during training, during racing, during physical exercise, by up to 40% of your total work capacity. So pretty much what that means, if you weigh 100 kilos and you dehydrate by two kilos, so let's just say you're 100 kilos um, on, on race day, you have alcohol, it dehydrates you, now you're now at 98 kilos the next day. What that means is that when you go to training, there is a, ch- a high chance that you can lose up to 40% of your total work capacity. So in other words, what that means is it takes you a few days of going to train and training like absolute shit, just going through the motions uh, because you decided to, to jump on the alcohol on Sunday night or after race day. Okay, so this is now affecting your future training sessions, which means that it's going to affect how you feel the next weekend because we haven't been able to get all those solid training sessions in the solid recovery. You've just been trying to play catch up and off operating at half your capacity. So that's important to note. Um, alcohol consumption also limits our body's ability to be able to produce glucose. So glucose is what our body uses to be able to um, to be able to to power us. Okay, uses it as an energy source. Um, and stops us from being able to do that. So we also have less energy, okay? We don't feel very good. We're not able to operate well. We're not able to train hard. We're, we feel like shit. We're dehydrated, okay? We don't have much body. We're tired, um, and we just don't recover well at all. We don't perform it well. We don't recover well. A whole heap of stuff just doesn't go well. And that's only the that's only the start of things. So obviously, the first thing is that it's affecting your performance, okay? The, it's not cool to jump up on the podium and have a beer with you or have a Jack Daniels. It's not cool to be able to um, go and have a few beers with the boys afterwards after racing if you take your racing seriously and if you're at a high level. Because the other thing is, those guys that are at the high level, that are on a podium, that are maybe at a state level, okay, that are up on the podium, or maybe at a national level, up on the podium. You have a whole heap of other people behind you that are looking up to you. You have no idea the amount of people that look up to you and the amount of people that you actually have an influence on. And you need to be able to take that into account and not be selfish and just think about you, but think about all the other people because all those other people behind you are trying to get to that position. They're trying to get up onto the podium as well. They're trying to be exactly where you are and they're replicating the things that you're doing. So if they see that you're jumping on the podium and having a beer, they think that it's perfectly okay for them to be able to jump off the bike and have a beer as well. Because if you're doing it and you're up on the podium and they're not on the podium, then it's probably not going to make much of a difference for them. So that's important to note. You have all these people, all these fans, these followers 
These people all over the world, all over Australia, all over the state, even on a club level, everyone has this on a different level. People that always win club races, all the people below them are always work. <coughs> excuse me, are always working to be able to get to your position where you are on a club level. The next people on a state level are then working to be able to get towards where you are on a state level. Same on a national level, same on a world level. Everyone is looking up to you. Everyone has followers and all the people behind you are looking at what you're doing. Even if you're not up on the podium, even if you're top five, top 10, all the people behind you are trying to get to where you are and they see what you're doing and they're trying to model what you're do, what you're doing to be able to get there. And if you're having alcohol, that's something that's giving them a false perception of what they're doing. As well as holding back your own performance, you're also holding the performance back for the rest of your sport. So think about that next time you're on the podium. Think about that next time you're having a drink, next time you're going racing or you're walking around the, the track with a beer afterwards. Think about all those people that you're influencing and the people that are seeing you, that are paying attention to you, that are looking at what you're doing, that want to be where you are. They want to be you, okay? Look at those people and go, how are they? How am I being perceived at the moment? How are other people seeing me? Okay, and that's the important thing to be able to take on board. Yes, it is affecting your recovery. It's affecting your performance, and that's on a, on a personal level. But also think about the influence it's having on everyone else. Okay, everyone else around you, the people, the other racers at the track, the other parents at the track, potential sponsors, which is something we're going to get into now. Um, which is hold, holding your performance back. Okay, yes, you might feel like having a beer, but at the end of the day, what do you want more? Do you want results? Or do you want to have a beer, okay? And I understand that not everyone takes their racing that seriously. Some people go to racing because they just enjoy having a good time. They enjoy community. But the people that this is aimed at, the people at the top of the sport, the people that are putting the work in, okay, but then letting it all go with alcohol and, and getting on the, going to the, the pub, having beers with everyone else after race day and affecting their recovery and their performance for the coming week, then that's something that you need to be able to look at and go, okay, do I really want to get to that next level? Do I really want to be at the top of the sport or do I just kind of want it? Okay, and that comes into sponsorship and what I want to be able to talk about next. Um, and that's being able to, being sorry, saying my connection's a little bit weak. And that, that comes into being, to, to seeing how other people actually perceive you, okay? Oh, we're back, kind of. It's cut out a little bit. So, what we're talking about is, is sponsorship and how alcohol uh, consumption after race day is affecting your your ability to be able to, to have long term quality sponsorship. Okay, now when I go on, on Facebook, okay, and I'm on, on a Sunday night, everyone's had, had race day. They finished their weekend. Okay, there's pictures of people on the on the podium. They're posting their photos of of them getting their, their trophy, okay, and they have a beer sitting next to them where they're holding a Jack Daniels in their hand up on the podium, that immediately signals to me, never work with that person in the entirety of my life because they don't take their racing seriously, okay? They think it's a bit of a joke. Those people that are up on the podium, those that are up, up there doing it well, that are, are taking in alcohol on the podium, think it's a little bit of a joke. They're not something that takes their, their, their training seriously. They don't take their nutrition seriously. They don't take their recovery seriously. They're not really taking the whole thing seriously, okay? It's a bit of, all bit of fun. Now, I understand, yes, some people do train and do go and race for fun, okay? But if you are at a high level, it's not fun, okay? Because... You have all those people below you that are looking after it. So yes, just say, let's just say you've had your time, okay? You've done well on national level. Now you just race on a state level and you're doing well, okay? But you don't really put as much work in as you did before and everything's relatively easy for you and you end up on the podium anyway, even though you haven't been really putting in too much work, you still have a responsibility and obligation to be able to set the standard for the rest of the motorsport industry and everyone below you, Okay? Everyone sees you and looks up to you. They don't know they don't know the things that you've done prior, okay? They don't look at all those things and take that into account. They look at what you're doing now. So if they see that you're up on the podium and you're having a few beers, they think it's perfectly okay for them to have a few beers, okay? Now, from a sponsorship point of view, when you have sponsors, you're looking to get supported. You're looking for people to be able to help you, to give you money financially, to be able to give you products, to give you high levels of discount, okay, for their products, for them to be able to invest in you, and then you uh, put pictures up on, on the, the podium drinking a beer, okay, then that's holding you back, okay? That's not helping your performance. That's not helping you to, to imp increase your level of sponsorship because if someone's sponsoring you and someone's putting in um, 
a whole heap of money investing a whole heap of time in you to be able to represent their brand, then that's not representing their brand very well if they see that they're, the people that they're putting work into aren't too interested in the nutrition or drinking alcohol, okay? You don't need to be a nutritionist or a PT or a strength and conditioning coach to figure out that alcohol is not good for you, okay? Everyone knows that, okay? But when you're at a, at a high level with your sport, you're representing brands, you're a brand ambassador, then you need to be able to take that into account. Same as if you you are, are taking your, your racing seriously and you want sponsorship and you want help, but you're posting pictures of you eating a chocolate cake the day before or having cupcakes on race day, then that's exactly the same problem. That's exactly the same thing, okay? Because what you're doing is showing people that you don't really care, you don't really take it too seriously, it's just a bit of fun. And sponsors aren't looking to help someone that's just after it for a bit of fun. Sponsors are out there wanting to help you, okay? There's tons of people out there that are willing to help you, but you've got to be willing to put in the work. You've got to be able to put in the time. You've got to be able to put in the effort, okay? And those sponsors are then going to come and look at you and, and want to help you because they're going to see that you're putting in the work. You're giving it 110%, okay? When people see you eating cakes, eating shit the day before, drinking alcohol, doing a whole heap of stuff, they don't want to help you, okay? They don't want to be involved with that because they know that the money that they're putting in is just supporting you to be able to have fun, okay? Um, when you shouldn't have sponsors if you're just, you're just doing it for fun. Yes, you're going to have people that support you that just want to chip in, but you're not going to have quality long-term sponsors that really make a difference in helping you with your racing if you're out there having fun, okay? You need to take it as seriously as them putting the money in, okay? <coughs> Obviously, they're taking it seriously, enough to invest in you to give you money when they could have been spending that on their partner, on their kids, on their own bikes, okay? They've chosen to spend that on you. And you need to take that super, super seriously. And when someone's helping you, someone's investing in you, someone's giving you money, someone's giving you products, someone's supporting you, okay? When they could have been putting that, that money, time, and effort somewhere else, you need to take that very, very seriously. And the way you take that seriously is by putting in the effort, by putting in the time, by being professional about your approach and being able to make sure that you're, you're not being perceived as the person who's just having fun. Be the person who's putting in the most effort, who's going to give that sponsor the best return, the best um, ambassadorship that they've ever had uh, by being able to put the most effort in, okay? And alcohol, cupcakes... Um, eating a whole bunch of shit on race day, okay, and posting about it is not something that's going to help, help get you there, okay? It's not going to happen. So you can't expect to have long-term quality sponsors uh, because they're not going to stay with you. They're not going to invest in you. Yes, you may get people that are some small business that has a few extra bucks that you've been friends with um, for the last 20 years that feels like chipping in a little bit. That's not a sponsor. That's a donation. If you want a good quality sponsor, someone that's going to be with you long-term, that's going to continue to support you, you need to support them. And remember, you're an ambassador for their brand. You need to be able to put in the time and effort as well, okay? Not just going out there, having a little bit of fun, eating a whole bunch of stuff, eating a whole bunch of shit and treating the whole thing like it's a big joke, okay? So look at where you want to be with your racing. Do you want to be successful? Do you want to be, do, be doing well, okay? Do you want to have sponsors? Do you want to have people that are, uh, are chasing after you that want to be able to, to help you? They can see the work ethic, see the hard work putting in, or do you want to be the, perceived as the person who's just doing it for a little bit of fun, who goes and has drinks after racing, doesn't really t care too much about the results and not really have too much of a long-term sponsorship, long-term results, and affect their performance and results in the meantime, okay? Which one do you want to be, guys? Number one, number two. It's your choice. Up to you, all right? Um, so we'll get another live stream for, together for you guys th this afternoon, guys. Uh, remember, train hard, race harder. See you guys.